There's a modern retelling of the King Arthur legend called The Once and Future King. And in it, Arthur, when he's a young boy, he's called Wart, he's being trained by Merlin, the magician. And in part of the training is that he gets turned into different kinds of animals to see the world from their perspective, to learn what wisdom the animals may have. And in one scene he's turned into a goose, a wild goose flying across the North Sea. He finds himself in a formation with other geese. Once he gets in conversation with the goose next to him, and they talk about where they're going. And the goose next to him, a female, says, one of the problems of this island where we're going is other flocks of geese come and they chase us away from our, our feeding grounds, make life difficult. We have to fight them off. And so the young ward says, why don't you just kill them? And she looks at him with horror and moves away from him. How can you think of killing your own kind? That's the lesson. This is what human beings do. They kill their own kind. Other animals don't. Other animals, their wisdom is that you have to live in a world where there are going to be people who make life difficult, but you have to put up with the difficulties. You know, don't go around killing them. And that means you have to carve out your, your own space. Push the difficulties aside and take your little space as enough. And this is what we do as we practice. If we were to straighten out the world before we could sit down and practice, not only would it be an impossible project, but also a lot of evil would get done. And so a lot of people would not fit in with our ideas of what we want. We, if we started killing them off, we'll get further and further away from the Dharma. I have to put up with the fact that this is an imperfect world. We're developing our perfections, but the world around us may be imperfect, will be imperfect. We have to look after our own space. This principle applies in general to the practice. As I would have said, we're living in a world where other people are breaking the precepts, but we don't break the precepts. Other people are in conflict, but we don't get into conflict. We can't expect the world to be perfect. If you're looking for perfection, you have to look inside. And even inside. There's certain things you have to put up with. Sometimes you sit down and meditate and there are pains. Sometimes the pains go away when you get up from the meditation. Others are more persistent. And so what do you do? You read the instructions in the, in the canon where they say you develop a sense of ease and well-being, a sense of rapture, and then you let it work through the body. Saturate the body, so there's no part of the body that's not saturated with rapture and pleasure. And you ask yourself, well, what do I do? The pain is there. It's not going to go away. We work around it. John Lee's images of a house where some of the floorboards are rotten, and if you were to lie down in the rotten spots, you'd fall through. So you lie down in the good spots. I had a student one time who had bought a house. It was in a lovely spot, but it had been abandoned for about 10, 20 years. And a lot of druggies had moved in, in waves, and come and gone, come and gone. The house was a total wreck. But the basic foundation was good, the basic house was good. It was just that the walls and everything were pretty much destroyed. So we got the house at a cheap price. And he was a handyman. So bit by bit by bit he fixed up the house. And the first thing he did was to work on the room where he would live. Just that one little spot made that livable. And then from there, learned how to make the whole rest of the house livable. This is what we do as we meditate. You find one spot in the body that you can make livable through the way you focus on it, through the way you breathe. 
the way you conceive the breath going in and out of that spot, and you protect that spot. As for the other parts of the body that you can't make nice, that you can't saturate with rapture, can't saturate with pleasure because there's pain, just let them go for the time being. Work on developing your position of strength, the position that allows you to stay here in the present moment with the, at least some well-being. And the same with the mind. Sometimes they're really persistent thoughts that keep coming back again and again and again. And you try to think about the drawbacks of those kinds of thoughts, and they come back again. This is where you have to think about the committee of the mind. So there will be some members that just keep talking and they're not going to stop. But why they don't stop is because you're paying attention to them. So let them chatter. Let them speak as much as they want. You just don't focus there. You focus on some other part in the mind. Because your attention to these thoughts is what feeds them. The fact that you find them interesting. And this is our problem. We start thinking and all of our thoughts become interesting. You have to realize that some of our thoughts are not all that interesting after all, especially the obsessive ones. They keep going over the same things again and again and again, and they have their hooks. But you have to learn how to shave off the hooks. And the first thing to do is just well, let them chatter, but you're going to be someplace else here in the present moment. Realizing that your awareness is larger than the thoughts. It may seem smaller because you get into the thoughts and they surround you. But you've got to realize there is a space in your awareness that is outside of them. And you can see them simply as processes and say, they're thinking, they're saying this. Not, I'm thinking, I'm thinking saying this. They are thinking they're saying this. That gives you some distance. Like that image in the canon where the Buddha says there's a man sitting watching a man lying down or a man standing watching the man sitting. You're able to pull out a little bit. And it's that ability to pull out that saves you. You have that choice. And if the thoughts are insistent, Stubborn, but well, you can be insistent and stubborn too. You're just not going to go following them. Let them chatter away. Think of them as some people in a corner of a room. You're in a large room. They're off in the corner someplace. You don't have to get involved in their conversation. And look out for any tendency in the mind to want to say, What are they saying about me? How am I involved in this? Just remember, okay, their karma is their karma. What did they say about you doesn't have to touch you, even if they say your name. Remember, your name is somebody that was given to you by somebody else. It's not really you. It's not really yours. Think in that way. In other words, disentangle yourself from any interest in the thoughts, any connection to those thoughts. And think instead about the breath. How is the breath going? Give yourself something else to get interested in. And they'll continue kind of an automatic pilot. And they've got their own momentum, especially the really obsessive thoughts. But you just have to say, nope, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to focus on something else. Think about the breath. Think about if the breath seems to be too subtle. You can think about the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, any of the recollections that you find inspiring. So even though you can't stake a claim for all of your awareness right now, all your awareness of the body, all your awareness of the mind, at least you can find your own space, clear your own space. So you have a place of comfort, like the man in the house. Even though some of the walls have been torn off other parts of the house. He didn't have to think about that while well, he stayed in his little corner. He made the corner comfortable enough 
so he could get rest. And then when he's rested, he could get back to work, fixing the house. So allow your mind a place to rest, because this is going to be a pattern throughout, even as things get more settled down inside the mind. You start actively engaging in discernment work, figuring things out. There will come a time when the problems that you're trying to work out have not been solved, but you have to put them down because you simply have to rest. If you can't rest, you wear out very quickly. So clear your space. Clear your space in the body, clear your space in the mind. Clear your little space here in the world. Things outside may not be going the way you want them to, and you can be pretty sure that they won't go the way you want them to. There'll be parts of the body that won't go the way you want them to, parts of the mind that won't go the way you want them to. But don't make that an excuse for saying, I can't settle down. You can clear your space, and you can protect it, and it provide you with a place where you can rest. When the mind is rested, then whatever duties it has, whatever challenges confront it, you're in a better position to take them on.